Ever since our early human ancestors first started making tools, there's been nothing quite simple and as useful as a good stick. This is my walking staff, and in this video, we're going to talk about why I designed it the way it is, and how it can be used as self-defense weapon, walking aid, multi-purpose survival tool, and a way to reconnect with our human origins. Stay tuned. Hi folks, Tom from Fan Dabby Dozy, here with another video that's relevant to the Highlander series. That's why I thought I'd stick on my plager but also encompasses some um, broader subjects. So a few people have asked me about my staff, and you know, although it is incredibly simple, I've actually put quite a lot of thought in its design, and I'm very fond of this stick. You know, I've found lots of different useful ways to use it in the field, and also lots of other interesting information about the staff, so I thought, why not do a whole video about it? So from an early age, I've always found a huge amount of joy and satisfaction in making and finding good walking sticks. I'm sure I'm not alone when I say that. I'm pretty sure there's something very primal within us. Uh, no one really knows when humans first started using sticks as tools, but people think that our early human ancestors first started hunting with wooden spears around 500,000 years ago. And uh, our closest human relative, the chimpanzee, has been found to make very simple jabbing sticks for hunting small primates. So it's safe to say that a good stick has been a companion for us for the majority of human evolution. So there's many different ancestral tools that you could describe as a stick, but uh, in this video I'm just going to talk about my staff because this is still useful to me every single day that I'm out in the field. So my staff, believe it or not, is a product of evolution and has been inspired by a couple of previous other sticks I've been using. So the first staff I used in martial arts was the short Japanese Joe staff, which uh, is made of solid oak and is the same thickness all the way along. Then when I was walking the length of Scotland with my buddy Richard, uh, I had a good stick then. I called it my story stick because every single day of walking I would carve a little symbol in the top of it to represent the day, so it was a sort of diary. So some features from the Joe staff with my story stick from Walking Scotland turned into this. So if you look at the top of my staff, you might see that there's a Mark III, uh, as this is the third model, so to speak, of this staff. The first one I made was in New Zealand from a piece of Manuka, but I then had to leave that behind. I then got a job in Malaysia, and I made another one from a piece of jungle wood. I had to leave that one behind. And then I got a job in the Highlands last year, and I made this one, a piece of rowan, and I still have it. So this staff is incredibly simple. I made that out of a single, newly dead standing rowan sapling. Uh, the length, it comes up to my chin. It's around about the same thickness all the way down, and it's balanced in the middle. At either end, I have carved a notch, and I've lashed and epoxied it to stop it from splitting. I have one end that I favor on the ground, and the other end that I favor facing upwards, there's an area for burning designs, just like my story stick. And hopefully all these features will come apparent throughout the video. So first of all, why did I choose Rowan to make my stick out of? Well, for practical purposes, it's commonly found. It's a hardwood and it's lightweight. But also, the rowan tree can be traced far back in mythology in my own cultural heritage of Scotland. Uh, to the ancient Celts, the rowan tree was a sacred tree, and as it was one of the first trees to bud after winter, it was seen to symbolize the awakening spirit and the rebirth of spring. Um, it also flourishes higher up the mountain than other species of trees, so therefore people believed it was closer to the divine. And in Norse mythology, uh, which is influenced Scottish heritage, uh, the first woman was said to have been formed from a rowan tree. Also in one of the stories, the rowan tree saved the life of the god Thor by pulling him out of a river when he was drowning. And then right up to the 17th century highlands of Scotland, the rowan tree was often planted close to houses as it was seen to ward off evil. Um, also, twigs of rowan were sometimes used to make good luck charms to protect your house or to protect your cattle. Uh, the Gaelic for Rowan is Cúrin, which means blazing berries, and that could be reference to some of the Celtic symbolism with fire, but also could be just because the berries are bright red. And in terms of using Rowan for a walking staff, I found some stories that it was generally good for just protecting you on your journey, so that's why I made it out of Rowan. So, now for its uses. My main everyday use for it is as a walking aid. Uh, I sometimes use a modern hiking pole if I'm climbing up a mountain because you stick it in your backpack, but other than that, 
I prefer this. So simply put, it's just another point of contact on the ground. This helps you keep your balance. It helps you save energy. It aids in testing boggy ground, jumping fences, crossing rivers and streams. It can also be used to keep spider webs and vegetation out of your face when you're walking through the bush. And also something to lean on when you're having a rest. And I chose this particular length because you know it's not too long, that it's unwieldy and it's getting caught in stuff. And it's also not too short, so I can use it to descend down steep slopes. Uh, I made it smooth and the same thickness all the way along, so I can quickly and easily adjust it depending on the terrain. And if your hands start getting tired from gripping the staff, then you can simply get a loop of leather, tie a lark's foot knot, pull it tight, and you have yourself a simple wrist strap to help take some of your body weight. And the more I've taken this staff out camping, I keep on finding new uses for it. I sometimes hang my staff off the ridge line of my tarp so I can hang some equipment. If you need a quick way to raise the corner of your tarp, you can tie a clove hitch knot in the guy line, pull it tight inside the notch of my staff and raise it that way. Another thing I've used it for is that say I'm at camp and I want to make a tool and I need to harvest some wood, then I mark the desired length of the tool on my staff with a pencil and then I can go out into the forest and use my staff as a measuring stick. I found this particularly useful for measuring wood that's out of reach and also to help you compare the size of the tool you want to make with the way the grain of the wood runs in the tree. I've also used it as a monopod, whether it's for a camera or a pair of binoculars and this length of staff is absolutely perfect for me. So what about the staff as a survival tool? Well, the simplest benefit is that it's nice to have a stick to keep your distance from something that you don't want to get close to you. For example, me just walking here to film this, I had to uh, fend off someone's badly trained dog. So that's quite helpful. Uh, also, if you're from somewhere that snakes are a problem, sometimes people carry a snake stick, which again, is quite nice to have with you, keep it at bay, but also as you're walking along, you can sort of hammer the ground, and this is meant to um, send vibrations through the ground so that the snake can sort of get out your way before you go and stand in it. Uh, another benefit is that you already have a nice shaft to make a spear or harpoon, whether that's to protect yourself against animals or to hunt small game. What about a projectile weapon? Well, with just a couple of bits of cordage and a bit of leather, you can make yourself a very simple but surprisingly effective staff sling. This is very similar to what people might know as the shepherd sling, but instead of generating energy by swinging the sling around your head, you basically just use the length of the staff and leverage to generate energy. Um, so this is where the notch of my staff also comes in handy. So on the sling I have a noose at one end and just a basic loop at the other. And where the notch is at the top of my stick, I tighten my noose on. I then get the end with the loop and just slip it over the end of the staff so that it sits there but it can still come off quite easily. Then with a projectile of your choice, I'm using a big rock, you can put that into the pouch and to throw it you just imagine your staff is like a trebuchet and as you launch the staff forward the sling will come up and over the staff and the loop will slip off the end releasing the projectile. I've literally made this sling in like five minutes and I haven't practiced much with it but you can play around with different lengths of slings, different size of pouches depending on the size of the projectile you want to throw and with a lot of practice you could use this effectively to fend off animals or hunt small game. The great thing about this you can just wrap it around the top of your staff to keep it out of the way. You could also somehow try design it so that it could double up as your wrist strap while hiking. So final thing to cover the use of the staff as a martial arts weapon. Now, disclosure, I'm not encouraging people to go around hitting one another with sticks, okay? But you know, the staff has been used in lots and lots of cultures all around the world for martial purposes, um, as well as a training tool for other weapons. So the best staff for fighting purposes is probably not gonna be the same as the best staff for a walking stick. Um, you know, my stick is mainly a walking stick, so you know, it's lightweight, it's a bit thin, so maybe not as good for martial purposes. Uh, but you know, travelers and pilgrims for centuries have used their staff 
as a walking stick and their primary weapon. So maybe they found a happy medium in terms of length, weight and thickness. And the really cool thing about the staff for martial purposes is just it's so dynamic. You can do different strikes and slides through your hands. You can use both ends. Um, and that's why I preferred my staff to be smooth and the same thickness all the way along. So as I mentioned before, my only martial experience with the staff is through the Japanese Joe staff. And you know, I still really enjoy practicing different katas and different moves when I'm out in the woods. I sometimes mix up some different bow staff spins as well, just for a bit of fun. And if you want to learn more about Japanese Joe fighting techniques, check out Saito Sente's videos. I'll put a link in the description below. Now in European martial culture, the staff was commonly known as the quarter staff in English. And uh, you know, it varied in different sizes, different thicknesses. Some had metal caps on the end to increase damage when you hit someone with it. The European staff fighting techniques and also ways of using the staff as a training tool was recorded by a famous 16th century German fencing master. If you want to learn more about that, I'll put a link to a really good video of some guys demonstrating some of the techniques that he originally recorded. So what about the staff in Scottish martial culture? Well, we can assume that Gallic warriors in around 15th to 16th century were using the staff as a training tool to fight with other weapons. For example, using longer staffs to uh, train to fight with the Lochaber axe, and maybe shorter staffs around shoulder height for training to fight with the claymore. And fighting with the staff on its own, the famous 18th century Scottish soldier, Donald McBain, describes the staff in his book, The Expert Swordsman Companion, which is a great book, by the way. The guy had a mental life. But he describes that the quarter staff was about seven feet long and made of ash, and in the book he describes a number of different techniques you can fight with the staff and how it can be used very effectively against lots of other weapons, including the sword. So there you go. Who knew I could talk for so long about a stick? Well, I hope this video inspires people to go out and make your own walking staff because I think making something so simple, you can learn about a lot of things. You can learn about the biology and the mythology of the tree that you make it from. You can learn some very basic woodworking skills as you shape it. You can then try out some different bushcraft and survival uses. And finally, learn some self-defense and martial art uses of it, of any sort of culture of your choosing. And then you can be reminded about all these things you've learned every time you take your stick out for a walk. So I first want to say a huge thanks to Heiko from the Catherine Society, who's been a huge help in researching the martial side of things. If you're at all interested in Scottish martial culture, uh, you should check out the Catherine Society's page and also Heiko's page. I'll put all the links in the description below. If you would like to support the channel, then you can make a one-off donation via the PayPal link in the description below. I'd really like to put a lot more time and effort in this channel this year, so you know, any little donation really, really helps. Please subscribe and ring the bell so you get notifications for the next video. Like, share with your friends, leave a comment about what other videos you would like to see. You can follow me on social media if you want. And uh, I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks folks, see you later. A good stick has been the first staff I used in marshmallow. Marshmallow. Staff, get your staff.